My name is Jonathan Pippin and uh, it's my pleasure today to be reviewing for you two mouthpieces by the British company Mercer and Barker. They've sent me a MB5, Mercer Barker 5, and an MB5F, Mercer and Barker 5F. The F stands for flat rim. Uh, these mouthpieces, slightly confusingly for the trombone population, are the same size as a 4. So although they're numbered 5, in your usual mouthpiece arsenal, the mouthpieces that have a number 4, like a Bark 4G or a Deniswick 4AL, are the equivalent mouthpieces to this size. They're 29.95 millimetres across, a Bark 4G is 26 a 4AL is 26 um, and they feel and respond like that sort of size mouthpiece uh, which is good for me because the mouthpiece that I use is about the size of a 4G. So what do I think about them initially? Well as soon as I got them out of the box the first thing I think is that they feel heavy. There's a lot of metal left in this mouthpiece and to be frank I like that. I think it helps to centre the vibrations from your lips into the instrument generally and there are companies who purposely make mouthpieces that are heavy top to do that so I think that they're onto a winner with that I quite like it um, the uh, flat rim mouthpiece is designed for those people who have perhaps in the past been used to a mouthpiece with a slightly flatter rim and a sharper uh, inside edge more like a Dennis Wick they will give you or they give me a little bit more security when you put the mouthpiece on your lip it feels like it's locked in place and it's perhaps arguably easier to get it into the same place every single time. The more rounded rim mouthpiece perhaps more similar to a bark is more similar to what I'm used to and for me is very very comfortable. They're both comfortable the flat rim just feels a little bit different for my taste but if I was a Dennis Wick player it would probably feel just right. So I'm just going to play a couple of things for you on it. I'm just using an iPad to record this. I haven't got fancy mic set up on, so the microphone quality, I apologise if it's not good enough for you, but there's no, not going to be any bloom or resonance. I'm not going to put any kind of uh, reverb on this at all, so you're going to get it exactly as it is. So my apologies for that straight away. So I'm using a Con 88H. Uh, it has got a dual ball slide, but that's about the only thing that's different uh, to normal Con 88Hs, which tend to be the industry standard in this country, at least. It's a dual ball slide with a 547562, so it's not the small to large, it's the large to larger. Um, so if I just play something for you, I'm just going to play for you the beginning of uh, John Iveson's wonderful arrangement of London Derriere. Classic. Middle register, not too loud, quite slow. The idea is just to make a nice sound, okay? This is the MB5, so the more rounded rim. <laughs> comfortable the rim feels very similar to mine very similar width I like the way that it feels it immediately feels like it's taking the air off me trying to make a big sound in the instrument and I wasn't making a massive effort there to fill it just sort of seemed to work so this is the flat mouthpiece now <laughs> there for me sitting on this side of the trombone is that this the rounder rim mouthpiece felt a little bit more centered more easily for me straight away let's move on to slightly higher playing um, I'm gonna play a famous trombone excerpt from the orchestral repertoire quiet high entry 
after about 40 minutes sat doing nothing. centered the sound seemed okay on this side of the trombone I'll try the flat rim mouthpiece now so for me that Flat rim mouthpiece felt like the articulation was a lot brighter with the same effort. The same amount of tongue and support just seemed to fly a little bit more. Perhaps uh, uh, not quite as fat a sound, but it felt very secure on the chops. I put it on, it felt like it was locked in place straight away. There was, it was comfortable. So that's something to consider. How that would behave on a euphonium, remember this was designed for a euphonium, so on a euphonium perhaps that extra front isn't so noticeable because the instrument doesn't have that characteristic of a trombone. I'm now going to try and play some higher notes, uh, see how the mouthpieces behave, do they help, do they not help. Um, I'm just going to play a little excerpt from Bill Geldard's arrangement of Autumn Leaves. This is on the MB5. centered I think as I came back down through the register I needed to do a little bit more work to try and keep the sound fat I allowed it to go a little bit thin but as far as the actual high register trying to get up to those high notes it worked it was using the weight it felt to me of the extra metal in the mouthpiece to help me support that sound the vibrations were through I, I thought it was quite good I was enjoying that so that was the MB5 so this is the flat rim mouthpiece now the MB5F and I'll try and play exactly the same secure. I felt really stable in the high register. I felt like when I needed to breathe and come back in there was no way it was going to go over. I thought that was good. It didn't feel quite as warm in the sound this side of the trombone. I was happier with the sound perhaps of the other one but is it for security in that register? I thought that MB flat mouthpiece, the MB5F, seemed really good. To be honest with you the issues that I was having there are not the mouthpieces, it's just me getting used to them I think which of course is part of the entire thing with mouthpieces. So low register on these mouthpieces is a strong point. I think the extra weight into the trombone, the extra weight of putting the vibration from your lips into the trombone really helps. Pedal register works on these mouthpieces. is probably about as low as you're ever going to have to go, especially on a tenor trombone. And so that's the F mouthpiece. The standard mouthpiece, very similar. I can't remember exactly the same notes, but you'll get the idea. that difficult at all these mouthpieces are really suited to playing in that low pedal and trigger register i wouldn't imagine you're ever gonna have to play as low as that on a bass trombone but for instance when you've got that uh, there's a couple of trombone solo repertoire where you do use b flat a a flat no 
problems at all here. The mouthpiece is helping me to do that. I think the flat mouthpiece there is probably one out from this side of the instrument anyway and how it feels. So in the very high register, these mouthpieces seem to work. Uh, I like the way that they feel. I find pitching on them is quite secure. It's confident. I feel like it's going to work. There's nothing getting in my way. That was the standard rim mouthpiece. Again, probably more to what I'm used to. Um, so if I try some sim something similar on the flat rim mouthpiece. Well, that flew. It I tried to go over. This one feels like it wants to go up. Now, I know that's not a great sound, but the mouthpiece feels like it's got more legs in the high register than perhaps the other one. And the flat rim mouthpiece. standing start through all the stuff that we've done and that I've done here and I know I won't have covered everything and for some players I've covered stuff that you would never need to do and for other players I've probably covered some stuff that you do try and do or you do very well these mouthpieces are certainly worth a look I think they're comfortable I like the way they take the air off me and push it through the instrument to make it a nice sound in immediately I don't have to work hard for that I don't think um, and uh, they feel great. I mean, they, they are quality. They look like quality. They feel like quality straight out of the box. So, you know, I would certainly say if you're looking for a mouthpiece that's around the size of a 4G, just a smidge smaller, 4AL territory, um, and you want something that's not a standard mouthpiece, perhaps, then this is certainly worth a look. I hope the review is of some use. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.